Thanks for joining us. Blah, blah, blah. Thanks for joining us. This is Walt Goodridge. I'm the Jamaican in China and beyond. And I've been looking forward to this for a long time. Um, my guest and I have talked about this for a while. He's been traveling. I've been traveling. But now we finally uh, got our schedules together and we're going to sit down and share some information that I hope will be helpful. My guest is Ken Marks. And Ken is an escapee from the rat race in the United States. And I'll um, save a, a, the surprise as to where he decided to escape to a little later. But let's get straight into what people are here for. So the first question, Ken, is who are you and why do you hate America? <laughs> so, uh, yes, my name, as, as you said, my name is Ken Marks, also known as the Exotic Foreigner. Um, I'm originally from New York City. Uh, I lived there born and raised my whole entire life. Um, there's a lot of uh, cultural things and uh, mental and philosoph philosophical things that I disagree with living in the US. So I decided that I hungered for something new, something alternative than what it was there back then. And I decided that, you know, maybe I should go live in another country or somewhere else in the world away from the English speaking ones to, I guess, quote unquote, find myself. And okay. If I can interrupt you, um, you bring up a very good point. And a few years ago, after I had already um, executed my escape, I came into a website called happierabroad.com that was run by or is run by Winston Wu, fellow from Taiwan. And on that site, I think it was Winston's uh, signature, had a quote from a book called How I Found Freedom in an Unfree World by mm -hmm. Harry Brown. And the quote is, and I've memorized this, the quote is, it takes far less effort to find and move to a society that has what you want than it does to try to change an existing society to meet your standards. So it seems that you came to that realization yourself. Um, but what, how were you able, I mean, not everyone just gets up and decides that they're going to move to another country to be happy. What was it that, was there a specific thing or an event or something that prompted you to, um, for your thoughts to move in that direction? Uh, there wasn't one particular thing. It was a combination of many little things that shipped at me um that led me to go and you know growing up i've always been an eccentric person or uh in new york what we say black sheep uh different languages have different words for this meaning mm -hmm. um basically i never fit in um you know i was oh i felt always as an outcast i always had different interests that people didn't like and little by little it was kind of building up building up building up i just wasn't happy um, in New York City, where I'm from, um, the, it's an international city, and there are many people from different parts of the world that go there. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was a, kind of an outlet because I was able to meet different foreigners, and I understood, oh, they're you know the way they live is a little bit more in tune to what my beliefs are, and um, so I was luckily able to be exposed to little pieces of things that maybe I'm not the problem. It's probably the local American culture. That's the problem. And the more I try to, you know, reach out to these foreigners, it felt like the American cultural uh, kept trying to pull me in, uh, you know, the whole consumerist culture, the whole mm -hmm. America is number one, blah, 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 which I didn't agree with. And really, I just couldn't, uh, I felt kind of caged in, mm -hmm. like, you know, the, the whole rat race, it, it, it not just the rat race in terms of working, but just in life. And I felt that, you know, um, I didn't have much to lose anyway, because where I come from, I come from the Bronx. And there, it's not a very happy place where I where I grew up. Mm -hmm. So I figured I have nothing else to lose. So why not give it a try? And if I don't like it, then at least I can say I tried, and that's what led me to go out. 
if you don't mind, um, and we can cut this part out if you don't want to reveal it, but how old were you roughly when you came to that realization? Oh, mm, let me think. Actually, I would say probably in my teens. Oh, okay. Maybe well, younger. right. You came to the realization in your teens. When did you actually execute the escape? In my 20s. Okay. Early 20s, I should say. All right, cool, cool. And where, pray tell, did you decide to escape to? So uh, before I reveal this part, I <laughs> want to explain how I, why I chose this country, because this okay. is, my uh, story is going to shock a lot of people <laughs> as it always does. But my choice was in Asia. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, because I'm from America, most Americans, they would rather go to places like Europe, for example, because mm -hmm. it's culturally similar and all this stuff. But I've always been interested in Asia because when I was a child, um, I had more exposure to, for example, Chinese culture. My father worked in Chinatown and mm -hmm. the, the Chinese that were there, they were selling what we called back then bootlegged movies. Mm -hmm. um, they, they would give him films. They would give him some like toys from China. They would give him stuff and he would bring them home. Mm -hmm. And I would say, what's this? What's that? And, and when I would watch the films, I would say, why they why do they their language so different? Why do they write like this? Why do they look so different? Why do they dress funny? So to me, it was so interesting. It it wasn't like Spanish speaking culture. It wasn't like French. It wasn't like anything in Europe or Africa that I've ever seen. So mm -hmm. that's what led me to where I chose to go. Now the country I first went to was Japan, and um, Japan was the number one country I wanted to visit first because things like, uh, you know, the food, the language I thought was amazing, the pop culture, pop culture meaning the music, the fashion, the video games, the electronics, those are things that really, that was really interesting to me. Mm -hmm. And in general, um, people from the Far East are much, much more, uh, how to say, polite, Okay. Much more friendly to me. They were always friendly to me. Mm -hmm. And these were some things where I felt like my soul felt more in tune with, you know, this particular culture. So I decided to give it a go and I had a wonderful time. Um, you went to Japan on vacation or was this part of the actual escape from the States? So... Because it was my first time traveling, mm -hmm. because I actually wanted to go with someone else, because moving to a totally different country, that's a lot for a normal person, not just in America, but for anyone, anywhere in the world. But the mm -hmm. problem is from in America, at least in New York City, I don't know about the rest of the country, most people uh, stay in their own town, Mm -hmm. their own state and they never left it they they've been there their whole lives they never left the mm -hmm. their town they never went past the fire hydrant and i thought that's that's like a prison for me mm -hmm. but whenever i would ask a person for advice about traveling i would try to ask some friends who some foreigner friends i tried to ask some others which was really really bad idea because all they did was try to re-recommend me to another country I had no interest in. Interesting. So, for example, uh, when I tried to ask a friend, he would say, like, why would you go to Asia? Why not? And then he would pick a, a country I have no interest in. So they, right, I've, been told right. to go visit, I've been told to go visit Mexico, mm -hmm. Puerto Rico, Canada, all these right, right. boring, no offense to those countries. Right. Mm -hmm but boring countries that I'm not interested in. That's right. not what I was interested in. Just to interject, you know, I um, I can't understand that mentality. <laughs> I really uh, can't. Yeah. I, I, I've tried to figure out what would make a person 
look at you, know that you have a dream to go to X and then say, don't do that. Go to Y instead yeah, because y. I, <laughs> because yeah. I think that that's a bit, it just boggles the mind. But, oh, yeah. Um, it, but it, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's going to get worse the more you hear the story. <laughs> so I think I did this for about one year and then I had enough and said, no, I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to just go. Mm -hmm. And then that's when I just went on a vacation as as a test run, as a test run. Mm -hmm. I went to Japan first, and then I immediately went to China. Oh, okay. And then I came back. To okay. I didn't know that. How long did you stay yeah. in China? China, I didn't stay too long because, uh, as I remember, uh, you needed to go to China, you need a visa. Okay. And oh, that's a, right. Getting a visa as a U.S. citizen, um, it's not easy right. as going to Japan, for example. I can just right. enter Japan. You can enter. Uh, we talked years ago. I remember at one point you didn't have a passport, correct? No, no, no. Uh, I had a passport, but there was some kind of error on my passport. Okay. And then I had okay. to exchange it. Okay, got you, got you. Okay, so... Um, so yeah, keep going. So what country did you end up choosing <laughs> and why? Oh, okay, so let me continue. After Japan it was great, it was it, it far exceeded my expectations of what I thought it would be. China also even further um, exceeded my expectations. So one week, I went back to New York, one week. Mm -hmm. after week i said nope i don't want to live in the u.s anymore i don't want to live in new york i want to live in asia cool cool then i decided that i want to choose something different I, I want to live in japan but maybe i'm not ready because um you know it's expensive okay i have to figure out what kind of job i need to get to stay there long term there was a lot of questions and different things that i needed to figure out but I wanted to have a test, like kind of test myself, like a rite of passage. Okay. Uh, you know, some people have a rite of passage where, you know, if, if they want to be seen as an adult or if they want to see themselves as someone that's really strong or have courage, do something that seems impossible or different or something, and then it can show you that you're ready. So I wanted to try something extremely different that no one that I know of, no one would think of. And then mm -hmm. I chose Central Asia. First was Kyrgyzstan. Okay. Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan was the country where I stayed, Kazakhstan. Okay. All right. So I understand the desire to be different. I understand the desire to just do something bold and, you know, because that is a sort of feeling that has motivated me for years um i like to stand out i don't want to do what everyone else is doing you know mm -hmm. if everyone else is going this way i automatically think you know i gotta go the other direction um but was there anything else about kazakhstan what did what had you learned what did you research what did you see that made that because i know there are a lot of stands in that area why you know why kazakhstan as opposed to kazakhstan as opposed to uh, the others, what drew you to that okay. particular country? 